Hi everyone, my name's Catherine. I'm the Access Officer for the Physics Department at Oxford University. And today we're going to be looking at this problem here, which is question 18 from the 2012 PAT paper. So let's see what we've got. A 12 volt battery, a voltmeter, an ammeter and a resistor with R equals two kilo ohms are sketched in figure A below. Sketch connections to create a circuit to measure a potential difference across the resistor and an electric current. How big is the current? So let's start with this. We want to measure the potential difference, so using the voltmeter, across the resistor. So that means we're going to have to connect our voltmeter in parallel with our resistor. So we're going to want to have uh, connections that go round like that. So that's our voltmeter connected in parallel with our resistor. But then if we want to measure the uh, current through the circuit, we need the ammeter to be connected in series. So let's put this in series with the other components. And we need to connect up our battery and our resistor, maybe something like that. So we've got our voltmeter in parallel with our resistor to measure the potential difference across it. And we've got our ammeter in series with the com other components to measure our current. OK, but we've got a second part to this. How big is the current? All right, uh, current in a circuit, V equals IR, which means that I equals V over R. The voltage in this case is, uh, the voltage V is 12 volts. And the resistance we were told in the question is two kilo ohms. So we've got 12 volts divided by two kilo ohms. Uh, taking care of our units, we will have uh, 6 over 10 to the 3 um, amps, which is going to be 6 milliamps. And that's the current through our circuit. Okay, that's the first part done. Second part is quite long. A capacitor with C equals 4 microfarads and a switch S sketched in figure B are inserted into the circuit. Sketch how the current depends on time from the moment TE when the switch is moved to E closing the circuit. OK, so we've got our switch down here and if it connects to D, then we have no voltage source in our circuit. But if it connects to E, then we've got the battery and we've got a resistor and we've got a capacitor. So what we're going to expect will happen is when we close the switch with the battery in it, uh, we're going to charge up the capacitor. If we close the switch with the capacitor charged to D, then we're going to discharge the capacitor. OK, so what was the question? Uh, sketch how the current depends on time from the moment TE when the switch is moved to E closing the circuit. Estimate the time T after which the current is not changing significantly. Then after a time TD much longer than T, the switch is moved to D. Sketch the current from that moment until the moment when the current is not changing significantly, indicating on your sketch the time interval t. So this is a big question. Let's split it up. Um, so let's split it here. So we've got uh, the first part about it being connected to E and then a second part about it being connected to D. Um, OK, first part first. Let's draw our circuit diagram. So what have we got? We've got the uh, moment TE when the switch is moved to E closing the circuit. So if this is part B, um, we're going to have our resistor. I'm just redrawing it without the switch to make it super clear. Uh, we've got our capacitor C. We have then got our, the switch is in this corner, but I'm not going to draw it for now. We've got our a battery there and we complete our circuit. So this is what our circuit looks like. Uh, R is 2 kilo ohms. Our capacitor C we're told is 4 microfarads and our voltage source, our battery, is 12 volts. So what do we actually want to do? We want to sketch how the current depends on time from the moment TE when the switch is moved to E closing the circuit. Okay so what's the voltage going to no, sorry, what's the current going to do here? Uh, the current is going to start off flowing 
it's going to charge the capacitor so eventually less and less current is going to flow um, and we know that that is exponential so if this is our current here and this is our time here so we know at the moment te the switch is closed um, so at that point uh, we have our maximum current flowing and then it's going to uh, gradually, uh, exponentially fall away. Something like that. Okay, um, so that's what we expect our current to look like. Then we need to do uh, estimate the time t after which the current is not changing significantly. Now the time associated with, uh, this is an RC circuit, it's got a resistor and a capacitor. Uh, the time associated with it, the time constant, uh, T equals RC. That's what we call the time constant, and we can work this out. So R is 2 kilo ohms, C is 4 microfarads. So we've got 2 kilo ohms times 4 microfarads, which is going to give us 8 times. 10 to the 3 times 10 to the micro is minus 6. Uh, so that's going to be 8 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds, which is 8 milliseconds. So that is the time, uh, the time constant for this circuit. That's the time after which uh, our current has dropped by, uh, it's dropped to 37% of its original value, so somewhere here maybe. So at that point, um, the the change is gonna be much, much slower. We have lost most of the current at that point. So there we go, that's the time. Then what's the second part of this question? After a time, TD much longer than T. Okay, so if it's uh, much longer than T, then we can assume that the capacitor has fully charged at this point. There's nothing left for it to do. Um, nothing is changing anymore. At that point, the switch is moved to D. Sketch the current from that moment until the moment when the current is not changing significantly, indicating on your sketch the time interval T. So uh, in this case, what does our circuit look like? So this is, uh, let's call it B part two. Uh, our circuit now is going to contain the resistor R and the capacitor C, but this time it has no voltage source. So again, R is two kilo ohms and C is four microfarads. Now in this first case, our current was flowing in one direction, but now our capacitor is discharging, our current is gonna flow in the other direction, which means that our graph is going to look slightly different. So if this is our current, uh, if this is our time axis here, time t, the amplitude of the current is going to be maximal at the point at which the switch is closed. That's when the biggest current is going to flow. So the switch is closed at time t d. Let me just give myself a bit more space. Um, and at that point, we're going to have our, our maximum current. Let's call that I max. And we're going to find that the current gradually decreases over time as the capacitor discharges. So again, we're looking at an exponential, uh, exponential decrease there. So uh, something like that. Uh, the question wanted more than just a sketch this time, didn't it? Uh, after a time D, the switch is moved to uh, TD, the switch is closed at D. Sketch the current from that moment until the moment when the current is not changing significantly, indicating on your sketch the time interval T. So again, we uh, want our time interval T, which is RC. Uh, that's the point at which the current has uh, decreased to about 37% of its original. So if this was its original IMAX, 37% uh, is going to be about here. Let's label that 0.37 IMAX. Um, 
and that is going to so if uh, this is TD here then uh, I max is 0.37 that is going to be at TD plus T so that this time interval here is T so that's that's what will happen for our circuit as it discharges and that is uh, one way to look at question 18 from the PAT 2012 paper. I hope you join us again uh, for the next one of these videos when we'll be looking at a different question. So see you there.